Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today I'm bringing you guys my top five most overhyped ships list. By overhyped, I mean that the ships on this list have quite the reputation. And in these cases, I believe it's a little overinflated, and in some cases, a lot of overinflated, in my opinion. I'm not saying these ships are bad or terrible. In fact, I argue that pretty much every ship on this list is quite good. They're just not quite as good as you've probably seen on the forums, comment section, and Reddit. So that's what we're going through today. If you guys find yourselves enjoying this video, make sure to drop a like and leave a comment and subscribe to the channel before you click off of it. Helps out with the whole YouTube side of things. And before we get into it, do keep in mind this is 125% my opinion. Nothing more, nothing less. So let's go ahead and get started with number 5, which is the Tier 9 Japanese battleship, the Musashi. Now yes, I know my Musashi hot take video, that video kind of took off and did a lot better than I thought it was going to, but my reasoning for my opinion on Musashi is this. The whole point of Musashi was to have 18.1 inch guns in tier 9 matchmaking. When the ship was originally released for free XP, tier 9 matchmaking was a completely different animal than what it was, than what it is today. We didn't have super ships, we didn't have super CVs, we didn't have, honestly, near the gimmick that we have in today's World of Warships back when the Musashi was released, and plus the CV system was completely different. Now, do understand too that what Musashi is, if you don't know, it's the earlier war version of the Yamato class. We don't have the mountain of AA and secondaries on the side of the superstructure, and the guns are a little bit less accurate than the Yamis. So in today's World of Warships, particularly in the matchmaking side of things, the Musashi often gets matched up against super ships, including super CVs, of which you're clearly an obvious target because you have, I believe it's around tier 5 or tier 4 levels of AA on the Musashi. Now granted, the Yami isn't exactly an AA barge either, but it does have more appropriate AA than the Musashi. Also, too, you're going to be going up against super battleships and super cruisers with guns that are less accurate than the Yamis. My other logic for this is that the Japanese battleship dispersion is rather quite frustrating. From someone that's played well over probably like 1500, 1600 games in the Yami, if you include uh, things like clan battles and ranked, the, f the dispersion on the Japanese battleship's cannon will be very frustrating, even with something like the legendary mod equipped on the Yami. You still get absolutely just frustrating dispersion. Again, that's to offset the fact that you have 18.1 inch guns that can go through just about everybody's armor. So put that on the Masashi that has lower sigma than the Yami, and it's a really frustrating experience. But again, back in the day when you were... Not necessarily guaranteed, but you did find yourself in a lot more tier 9 games where you were top tier and you were seeing tier 7 ships. Yeah, it was really fun and e easy to bully tier 7 ships out of existence with the Yami. Uh, another thing is that a lot of times you don't see this in clips and stuff is that the Yami and the Masashi both have the same problem of their guns are too big, and in a lot of cases they just outright overmatch the target. And when you're playing at tier 7, that's even more of a thing because of how thin the armor is on those ships. Now while it's true, the Masashi still is a tier 9 premium ship, and it still does have the tier 9 premium economy, and you're talking, well you're listening to, some, to someone that of the 7 times they've popped um, Yamamoto's skill, Four of those have been on the Masashi. It's all very true. And yes, if the ship was out right now for sale for either free XP, coal, or whatever you want it to be out for right now, for a reasonable price, the average price of a tier 9 premium, I would say absolutely it's worth it. Pick it up. But the fact is, it's not. The ship is only available in the armory auctions or in the Christmas container event. And unless you're someone like me that has darn near every premium in the game, you're not really guaranteed to get the thing during the Christmas container event. If you don't have a lot of premium ships, there's, god, hundreds of ships on the Santa container list now that you have to get through before you even have a decent chance at getting the Musashi. Now, if it comes back in the auction, that's a different animal, but will it? I don't know. 
I'm just saying that the game has evolved to where this ship isn't in near of an advantageous position as it was beforehand, especially when it comes to matchmaking and when it comes to just how the game is today. So that's why it's on this list. It's overhyped for the cost of the thing today and the fact that it's just not in near a good situation as it was a few years ago. If you have it, great. It's a great boat to have. If you pick it up in a super container, you get really lucky in whatever container that you get and you get it. Excellent. It's a great boat. It's just not worth a couple hundred dollars, probably actually several hundred dollars, you have to throw at the Christmas container event to get it, in my opinion. That's my hot take on it. It's not worth $700. <laughs> and the reason the ship's at number five is because it's not really the ship's fault. It's not a bad ship, objectively. It's just that the game has evolved in a way that is not necessarily beneficial to the Musashi experience. So going on down to number four, we have the American Tier 10 aircraft carrier, the FDR. Now the FDR, especially if you were around when this ship came out, you know how terrifying this thing was. But in today's World of Warships, the FDR is just kind of... It's okay. <laughs> it's, it's fallen quite a lot from where it started out life as. Now, part of that is because it, it did get nerfed finally a couple of times, and there were some global changes as well that did rein in the FDR's capabilities. It, in today's World of Warships, it is still quite a good carrier in my mind. It, it's pretty expensive though. It is, I still believe, the most expensive still ship in the game. The, the whole shtick with the FDR is that you have very large squadrons with flights of two planes usually per squadron. Each of these planes is carrying an absolute crap ton of munitions on board. The Torpedo bombers, for example. Each plane carries four torpedoes. And if you look at the size of the flight in the video in the background, you can see that you've got a lot of ordnance to drop. So when these planes attack, you have two planes dropping eight torpedoes, which creates a wall of torpedoes that's, especially if you have a good FDR player uh, playing the ship, very hard to avoid when dropped correctly. And then you apply that to the rockets and to the bombers as well. It's a ton of munition being dropped at once. However, after it's dropped, you have a very, very long cooldown time before your next attack. Um, most CVs, it's in like the 4 to 5 second range. The FDR, we're talking, I think it's like 20 seconds plus before you can attack again. The planes are slow, but they're tanky. So, the idea is that you choose where you want to go, you can loiter around outside of AA range for some time between attacks, and then you can go back in with your very, very, very high levels of munition. The plane regen rate is also quite low on the FGR, so even though the planes are very tanky, it does hurt to lose them quite a bit. Now, with the way that the games evolved today, as we all know, at higher tier, everyone loves to just sit together in the back of the map and chill there for most of the game. Which means for most cases with the FDR, you either have a situation where you just can't get through the flak because you have six ships sitting on top of each other, and at that point, Yes, the AA is very effective, so you have to either you know, throw your planes away trying to get minimal damage from these balls of, of ships, or you just wait for forever, it feels like, until one or two ships start to break off and go off by themselves, and you finally get some damage in with how slow the planes are. You ha either have to have really good positioning with your CV itself, or, well, you're just boned in terms of doing damage. Now, is it still a good CV? Yes, absolutely. But you have to be a very good CV player to get the most out of it. And again, it's worth 30, what, 32, 33,000 steel, which is an insane amount of steel. Uh, if you guys have never gotten a steel ship, it, it takes usually a full year's worth of competitive to actually acquire enough steel, steel to get that steel ship and it's um yeah it takes a hot minute to acquire all that steel even for someone like me that's more involved in the game now of course there's unicums that uh they have so much so they don't know what to do with but for the average joe in my opinion for what you got to pay for it its reputation does precede it a bit from when it was still ungodly powerful which again is why it's up here because it's not necessarily the ship's fault that the game evolved in that way just like with the uh the Musashi. 
All right, going on down to number three, we have the Tier 8 American aircraft carrier, the Enterprise. Now, the Enterprise is a ship that has been the victim of the CV rework and the subsequent hot changes that we had afterwards. And then, again, just the amount of global nerfs and changes that we had over the course of the last, well, not really last year, but the last two or three years, we had all those global changes to plane speed, to all the reticles that got changed, and then the tweaking of A mechanics and such. The Enterprise went from being a ship that was most definitely the most sought after CV in the game, to now, it, it still is. You still see people talk about, oh, how I want to get the Enterprise, hope the Enterprise comes back for this or that. And a good amount of that is, of course, because, well, it's the Enterprise. It's a real still historical ship. It's one of the most historically significant ships in the U.S. Navy during World War II. And the name Enterprise carries a lot of weight within the U.S. Navy. But, if we're speaking honestly and about the ship's performance, it's fallen off a lot. It's gone from being the literal God CV, the, the last CV you'd want to see on the enemy team back in the day, back in the RTS CV day, to being one that's like, oh look, it's Enterprise, someone's actually playing that ship. Because it's fallen that much. It's gone from being that amazing crazy CV to just being, eh, eh it's alright. It's alright. Back in the day, you used to be able to just remove cruisers, and um, if you're really good, just one, maybe two passes with your AP dive bombers. Um, if you don't have fond memories of being on the receiving end of an Enterprise bombing run, um, yeah, be, be glad that you don't, because that, that was kind of terrifying back in the day, especially back uh, when you could get multiple CVs in a game on the on the regular and then, of course, when you were, like, in a Tier 6 ship. I have a very fond memory of being in, I think it was my Graf Spee or some German cruiser. And I just got absolutely nuked out the match by an Enterprise one game in, in like, the first, I think, literal two minutes of the match. Boy. Boy, this ship was something. Uh, the rocket planes are also really consistent as well. Even after the CV re re uh, rework, the rocket planes were amazingly consistent. But then they nerfed those as well with the five-second firing delay. So, yeah... The, the the munitions of the Enterprise, the, the rocket planes, the torpedoes were just really consistent. And then the AP dive bombers which were just amazing. And now the AP dive bombers, it's like you're playing a, a slot machine. Sometimes you get a salvo that is good and you'll get a couple citadels off on them. Uh, a lot of times though, you, you might get one or two and then the rest miss. So that's kind of frustrating. The torpedoes are still pretty good uh, by today's standards. And in my opinion, this is where you get most of your damage in the Enterprise today. So yeah, just a ship that's fallen off because of global changes and stuff. And again, not necessarily its fault, but the reputation this ship has is definitely overhyped for what it is today. I'm not trying to discount or downplay the historical significance of the ship. It's completely understandable if you're a collector and you just have to have every historical ship in the game why you would want this. But if they put this in auction, and I do believe it is available in the Santa containers, I definitely wouldn't go throw several hundred dollars at the game trying to get this ship just on its reputation as a ship in game. Definitely not. Alright, going on, on down to number two. We have the Tier 10 Soviet cruiser, the Petra Pavlovsk. The Petro frickin' Pavlovsk. Man, there was a whole year where this ship was, without a doubt, the single best cruiser in the game, bar none. Today, however, it is not. It is most definitely not. Now, back when it first came out, of course, Absolutely, this ship was nuts. This ship was just like the single hardest thing to kill in the game. It was, God, if you needed something to just sit and live on a flank and a cap, Petro, no doubt. Because you couldn't citadel it, you had to farm it out with HE. If you look at it, it's actually a pretty slender ship from the bow in. So, of course few a few HE shells are gonna miss and plus there's not a lot of superstructure on the thing so good luck farming it out and then Citadel and gets yeah it had so little freeboard that it was almost the first submarine introduced in the game back in the day but today however things have changed so what happened is that after 
pretty much a year of running around as undoubtedly the most um, hated ship in the game, and a ship that kept getting banned from from COTS and then Limited and CBs and stuff, the devs finally realized that, hey, we, we kind of need to fix this thing, and they raised it up out of the water to where you can actually get at the Citadel now, like every other Soviet large cruiser, or large ship in the game. If you guys don't know, Soviet large ships all have a very similar play style, so like from the, from the Kremlin, the Petro, the Stalingrad, and the Moskva. Bow in, you are incredibly tanky, but if someone can flank you and get around to your sides, your Citadel is exposed and fairly vulnerable from at least medium to close range. The Petra Pavlos, you can get around to the side on this thing, unload a whole broadside into it, and with pretty much regardless of whatever AP or whatever caliber gun you were having, and sure, you'd chunk the living crap out of it, but you, you wouldn't citadel it because of how low it was in the water. But now since they raised it out of the water, yeah, it's 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 much, much easier to to deal with now if you can get a around to its sides. Another thing that definitely overhyped the ship was its gun performance. During testing, the accuracy of the guns was much, much higher than it is nowadays. And with the performance of the AP, because it's got Soviet bias AP, you could easily Citadel broadside battleships out past 15, 16 kilometers in the Petro during testing. And these are the clips that, of course, made it on YouTube, made it on the forums, and made it on Reddit, and they got circulated around. What everyone seemed to forget to mention is that they nerfed her accuracy by a lot. A lot, a lot. In today's World of Warships, I'd rather have a Mosfa because the guns are much more accurate, out to longer ranges, and they have similar-ish performances. Now, at close range, the guns still absolutely shred. Don't get me wrong, if you're trying to push a Petra Pavlovsk and you're in a battleship, you aren't safe. Don't show your broadside because that AP will absolutely murder you. But good luck hitting anything past like 14 kilometers which is quite normal in today's World of Warships. Most engagements for a good part of the game are taking place at 14 kilometers, and the AP just isn't accurate enough, or the guns just aren't accurate enough to where you can rely on your AP, unless maybe you're shooting at something like a Grosser Curve first or some giant other battleship. So, yeah, a ship that's beyond overhyped. It's still a good ship in my mind today. She still has the radar, and from the bow end, she is still really tanky, and again, you have to push the thing to deal with it, and it's got good guns at definitely at 12 kilometers in, the guns will hit what you are aiming at, so it's still a very difficult ship to deal with today, but it's not the unkillable rock that you've heard about on the forums and in comment sections and stuff. So, yeah, that's why she's on this list as well. Of course, if you slap Kusazov on here too, that does increase her survivability, survivability as well, so, yeah. Alright, going on down to number one, we have the Tier 10 Soviet battleship, the Slava. The Slava is in a very similar boat as the Petra Pavlovsk, except to a, a bit higher of an extreme. So, the Slava was in dev hell for a very, very long time. The idea was you take the Kremlin, swap out those 18-inch guns with 16-inch guns, and basically give it the reverse gimmick that the Soviet battleships have. Soviet battleships have a gimmick to where the closer you are to the target, the better your dispersion. So, ideally with like the Kremlin and the Soviet battleship line, it encourages you to push because your guns are more accurate at closer ranges in layman's terms. The Slava, flip that around. The longer you are from the target, the further away you are from the target, the more better your dispersion is. More better, that's proper English, right? That's sarcasm. So, at longer ranges, you have very accurate 16-inch Soviet guns with, of course, the Soviet ballistics attached to it. So naturally, again, like with the Petra Pavlovs, during testing, this ship was dev striking battleships, tier 10 battleships, from like 20 kilometers away. It was insane. Not to mention that it was still on the Kremlin hull. So you had an incredibly tanky Soviet battleship that could dev strike your Montana or your Yami from across the map, and then when you tried to deal with it, it's a Kremlin hull. Like I just got done talking about with the Petra Pavlovsk, an incredibly tanky ship hull. Great armor, an amazing level of HP. It could bounce just about anything that gets thrown at you because you have that icebreaker bow. And only really the tip of your nose can be overmatched by 18.1 inch guns. So, yeah, this ship was quite fearsome during testing. Uh, if you remember back in the day, it was known as Pobeda. They later changed its name to Slava. But, 
after it's got, I think this ship has been testing for, I think, well over a year, something like that. After all that, they went in, they messed with it a bunch, they, they nerfed the AP a bit, and then they completely removed the ship's armor. This ship can now be overmatched by 15-inch guns. Her bow and her stern, then all around to her armor is much thinner than the Kremlin's. She has less HP than the Kremlin. Uh, she does still have Kremlin's old AA, though. So the AA on the ship is actually survivable and quite good. So you gotta get that going for you. But now 15-inch guns can overmatch your bow, which of course at tier 10, especially with super ships, there's plenty of stuff that'll go right through your nose. And plus, once the ship did get released, the player base realized that, hey, he only has 16-inch guns. So if I'm in my tier... 10 ship or tier 9 ship or tier 8 battleship I can just go bow into him and now congratulations you, you've, you've, ruined, you've ruined the man's day because they're only 16 inch guns they can't overmatch of course 32 millimeters of armor and plus with all the heavily armored cruisers we have at higher tier now there's a fair amount of cruisers that can of course bounce the, the I'm sorry the Slava quite easily if they know how to angle correctly but yes if you still show broadside to the ship uh, you're having a very bad day. A very, very, very bad day. But again, it's not the ship that it used to be. And it's a research bureau ship, so it does require you to regrind lines quite a bit. And I wouldn't necessarily discourage you from regrinding the, the lines to get this ship, as long as you understand that it's not the Slava you've probably heard about in forums and on the comment section of YouTube videos and such. Still a good ship in my mind. Again, if you enjoy sniping, if you're a person that's good for looking for those opportunistic sh cross-map shops, it's great for that. But not quite what it once was, especially during testing. Alright guys, that's my top 5 most overhyped ships list. Let me know in the comments down below what your 5 would be. Uh, what ships do you agree with me on? What ships do you disagree with me on? And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Remember to drop a like and comment and subscribe to the channel. Helps out a lot, again, with the YouTube side of things. Hope you guys have a wonderful Monday, a wonderful week. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.